Last month, we looked at some of the ingredients in vaccines, explaining what they are, why they're in there, and why they aren't harmful to health. Today, we're gonna to focus on the COVID vaccines, explaining just what they are and how they work. And whilst we're at it, we'll address some of those silly theories that are being banded around at the moment. This is the truth about COVID vaccines. <laughs> Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Tinfoil Tuesday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, I want to quickly point you in the direction of the Run Man Dan channel. I'm training for a 50k ultra and this weekend just gone, I ran the new Forest Rattler Marathon so you can find out exactly how I got on. Link for that is in the description. Also, if you're interested, the Dr. Peel merch is now available. A link for that is also in the description. Go get yourself a Dr. Peel t-shirt or hoodie and we will make it real. Save Dr. Peel. Right, back to today's video where we're gonna take a look at some of those silly COVID vaccine theories as well as explain how they actually work. The vaccine program in this country certainly is one of our greatest achievements. So far, over 75% of the adult population has had at least one vaccine and over 50% has had two vaccines. Last week, we had a day of zero deaths. It is working. Yet last week, I find out that 34% of under 30s in this country, in the UK, believe that the COVID vaccine is harmful. What the? Let's crack on and start with exactly how these COVID vaccines work. Now I'm gonna focus on two specific vaccines, the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine and the Pfizer vaccine. Now the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine is more of a traditional vaccine where the weakened version of the common cold virus has been modified to contain genetic material shared by the coronavirus. This genetic material is the spike protein that you so often see in the images of the coronavirus. Once injected, the modified weakened cold virus enters your cells and starts creating these spike proteins. The body reacts by producing antibodies which activates T cells, which destroys any cells with these spike proteins on. Now, if you catch coronavirus, the body is prepared and can fight the infection. With the Pfizer vaccine, the method of the immune response is slightly different, but the outcome is the same. The Pfizer vaccine uses messenger RNA, or mRNA, which is made from a DNA template in the lab. The mRNA used is preloaded, if you will, with instructions to produce coronavirus antigens. These antigens will be the same as the ones invoked by the AstraZeneca vaccine. The immune response will be exactly the same. So far, the efficacy of these vaccines has been excellent with up to 90% protection from death and or hospitalization. However, there appears to be some doubts by quite a large amount of people and not just anti-vaxxers. Some people have had some serious reservations about these COVID vaccines, which, let me get this straight, is fine. But what I wanna to do today is alleviate some of those genuine worries as well as deal with those silly theories as well. So let's start with one of the most common concerns regarding the COVID vaccines, and that is the speed in which it was produced and approved for use. Under normal circumstances, there is a process for developing a vaccine. A preclinical stage which looks at how the vaccine will work, what antigens they're looking to produce with the vaccine, and what is the best delivery method. This stage usually lasts one to two years. However, with the COVID vaccine, we have to remember that the coronavirus was already a well-established virus, which we knew a lot about. There are seven types of coronavirus that circulate around humans. Four of them cause very mild symptoms and are relatively harmless. The other three are SARS, MERS, and COVID-19. Because of this, scientists knew the spike protein that the coronavirus carries, and with a bit of research could pinpoint the exact genetic makeup of the COVID one. After this, the clinical trials start, and this happens normally in three phases. The first two phases look at how safe it is, what the right dose is, and what sort of side effects there are, and trials a relatively small number of people, up to a few 100 perhaps. The third phase deals with how effective it is, and this is where the number of people increases to around a few thousand. Usually, the whole clinical trial process can take up to six years. However, with the COVID vaccine, you have almost an unlimited supply of people that are infected with coronavirus to test this on and a pretty much limitless pot of money. Not to mention the incredible pressures from the governments of the world. You can easily see how this can now be done in a matter of months rather than a matter of years if we take all of that into account. 
After this, the vaccine just needs approving. And again, with the extensive pressure from pretty much everyone and the whole world waiting, this would have been done relatively quickly. However, I must stress, the COVID-19 vaccines would not have been approved if they weren't safe or effective. Every single stage of the normal vaccine production process would have been followed with the COVID vaccines. Every test was done and every box was ticked. But again, make no mistake, it would not have been approved if it wasn't safe. And that has been extensively proved with the results so far, with very, very few major side effects from all of the vaccines. So now that we've dealt with the time it's taken for the vaccine to be produced and approved, which to be fair is a rational fear if you don't know much about the process, let's move on to some of the more irrational stuff. Now I've seen quite a few people state that microchips are being injected into us with the vaccine, which was possibly an idea by Bill Gates. Now, microchips certainly are small enough to fit into the vaccine. IBM, for example, have made one that is only two nanometers long. However, when the doses of the vaccine are taken from the vial, I think there's around four doses per vial, how can the administer of the vaccine guarantee that each dose is getting one microchip? Also, you've got to consider the cost of this, with over 1.9 billion vaccines given so far. And if the powers that be really want to track you with this microchip, make no mistake, they already can. I was actually emailed a potential schematic for this microchip that's going into the vaccine, but if you actually look properly at it, you'd realize that it was for a guitar pedal. Another one of these irrational things that I've heard is that fetal tissues are used in the vaccines. Now that is obviously incorrect. There is no fetal tissue in any of the vaccines whatsoever, but I think I know where the confusion has come from on this one. Pfizer, Moderna and Johnson & Johnson used fetal lines in the development of their vaccines. Now fetal lines are cells grown in a laboratory which descend from elected abortions in the 1970s and 80s. Fetal lines are not fetal tissues and as I stated earlier they are not part of the actual vaccine, they were only used in the development of it. Turning our attention to the mRNA vaccines now, I've heard several stories that some of these vaccines can alter your DNA. The way that these mRNA vaccines work means that this is simply impossible. Normally in your cells, DNA makes RNA and RNA makes proteins. It is a one-way street and cannot happen in reverse. It is simply impossible for RNA to do this. And besides, the RNA that's injected into you via the vaccine gets nowhere near the nucleus of your cell, so therefore cannot manipulate any DNA at all. So no threat from DNA altering at all from any of the COVID vaccines. Finally, I'm gonna take a look at one of the recent crazes going around, which is where people are putting metallic objects on the injection site of the COVID vaccine claiming that the person injected is now magnetic. Well, first off, if we look at this particular video, some of the objects being used here are made from aluminium, which is not ferromagnetic. Secondly, why is it only the injection site that is magnetic and not the whole of your body due to the vaccine circulating around it? And, and how is it magnetic in the first place if there's nothing magnetic within the vaccine? I suspect that these videos are nothing but silly tricks. Clammy skin can make a lot of things stick to it at the right angle. The plaster used sometimes after an injection can leave a sticky residue, which could help make things stick as well. Plus, more people that have tried this have failed to make something magnetic stick to their arm than succeed. What does that tell you? So there we go, a full rundown of all the issues I've seen regarding the COVID-19 vaccine. It has been produced and approved just like any other vaccine. It has very little side effects, just like any other vaccine. And there's nothing foreign in it to control or track us, just like any other vaccine. In short, it is a safe and effective vaccine that will save lives. If you don't have an underlying condition, which means you possibly can't take it, then I don't see why you wouldn't take it. Please, please do share this video far and wide and get as many people as possible to see it. I do think this is one of the more important topics in the world at the moment. 75,000 likes and I'll get a COVID vaccine doubter on this channel and we'll address their concerns in a QA. and a Thank you all very much for watching. It truly is appreciated. It really is. If you enjoyed it today, then please do like the video and subscribe as well if the feeling takes you. I have been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great day and I'll see you all on Friday where we'll be doing part two of Eric DeBay's Flat Earth documentary, Level. 
see you then.